Jesus Christ is a central and revered figure in the Islamic faith. A fundamental pillar of Islam involves the fundamental belief in all of God's prophets and messengers that he has sent down to relay his message to mankind. The message being that there is no deity that is worthy of worship and veneration except God and his commandments must be followed. Anyone who fails to believe in any of God's messengers or prophets is considered a disbeliever in Islam. Muslims hold all prophets of God in high esteem, including Jesus, peace be upon him. Muslims love and admire Jesus and will not speak the name of Jesus or Isa in Arabic without respectfully adding the words, peace be upon him, following the reference. Aside from Christianity, Islam is the only other religion that requires followers to believe in Jesus Christ. God's last and final prophet, Muhammad, narrated, he who bears witness that there is no true God except Allah alone, having no partners with him, that Muhammad is a slave and messenger, and that Isa, Jesus, is a slave and messenger, and he, Isa, is his word which he communicated to Mary, and his spirit which he sent to her. That Jannah or paradise is true and hell is true. Allah will make him enter Jannah accepting whatever deeds he accomplished. Jesus Christ is mentioned more than 25 times in the Holy Quran. The mother of Jesus is Mary, Maryam in Arabic. She was a pious and righteous woman. According to the Quran, she is the holiest and greatest of all women that ever lived. Mary has the great honor to be the only female mentioned by name in the Holy Quran and even has a whole chapter named after her. And mentioned when the angel said, O Mary, indeed Allah has chosen you and purified you and chosen you above all women of the world. Quran 342 The mother of Mary, Hannah, was at one time a barren woman who longed for a child. She made a vow to God that if he gifted her with a child that she would consecrate him to his service in the holiest of all temples, the temple of Solomon, to be a scholar or a priest. God answered her prayers and gifted her with a girl child. Hannah was a bit saddened at the child's gender, as usually only male children were given in service. Yet in accordance with her promise to God, she instructed that Mary is raised at the temple by her uncle Zechariah, Zechariah in Arabic, who was a prophet of God. As Mary got older, prophet Zechariah would visit her in her chamber at the temple, where only he had access and he would observe that she feast on the best of foods and cold drinks. He would ask as to who had delivered these feasts when no one else had the keys to the chamber. She then would respond, Allah, she was blessed by miracles of God, even prior to the birth of Jesus Christ. According to the Holy Quran, Angel Gabriel walked into Mary's chamber. Terrified that someone had come to harm her or to remove her chastity, she cried out, I seek refuge from Allah. Angel Gabriel responded, I am not an enemy, I am Allah's servant and the messenger who came to deliver glad tidings to you, that Allah would bestow upon you a child. She replied, How can I have a child if I don't have a husband and no man has touched me? Angel Gabriel then responded, Allah creates that what he wills. If he decrees a thing, he says unto it, Be, and it is. Quran 3.47 Jesus Christ was conceived with the word kun, which means be. He did not become the embodiment of the word kun, like Christians mistakenly believe. Rather, his existence was elicited by the word kun. Jesus' real name is Esau. The Latin name Jesus was given by the Christians of the West. The letter J does not actually exist in Aramaic. So Jesus himself would not recognize the name Jesus. Mary gave birth to Jesus in the valley of Bethlehem, away from the people, after which she then returned. The Quran confirms that Jesus was born of a virgin woman. When they saw her with newborn child Jesus, they said, O oh Mary, you have certainly done a strange thing. O oh, sister of Aaron, your father was not a man of evil, nor was your mother unchaste. Quran 19, 27-28 Mary didn't speak, but instead pointed at her child. So she pointed to him, they said, How can we speak to one who is in the cradle, a child? Jesus said, Indeed, I am the servant of Allah. He has given me the scripture and made me a prophet and he has made me blessed wherever I am and has enjoyed upon me prayer and zakah as long as I remain alive and made me dutiful to my mother and he has not made me a wretched tyrant. And peace is on me the day I was born and the day I will die and the day I am raised alive. Quran 2933 The Quran references the miracles that Jesus performed by the power and the will of God even in his infancy 
when he spoke in the cradle to defend his mom's chastity and innocence. The word Messiah is the title of Jesus. The word Messiah comes from the Arabic and Hebrew word Mesaha, which means to rub, to massage, to anoint. In religious context, the word translates to mean the one that has been anointed. It was common at the time to appoint or anoint a king or judge of Israel on the head with oil when taking office as a sign of inauguration. Additionally, in the law of the previous nations, they would rub a person's head with special water when they converted to their religion. This practice lives on today in the form of the Baptist ritual. Prophet Jesus was anointed as the next prophet by his cousin, John the Baptist, the preceding prophet. Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, is called by four noble titles, the Messiah, the Messenger of Allah, a word from Allah, and a spirit from Allah. Muslims' belief and understanding of Prophet Jesus stands in accordance with God's final book, the Holy Quran, and narrations of God's last prophet, Prophet Muhammad. Jesus Christ was a mere prophet of God whose mission was to confirm the Torah, which was revealed before him. He did not come bearing a new law, but only abrogated some laws to make life easier for the children of Israel, the nation that lived before us. Jesus was sent to teach the same general message which was taught by all the previous prophets of God, that we must worship and follow the one God and shun every false God. God created Jesus Christ without a human father, just as Prophet Adam was born without either a human father or mother. Allah just said be and it was. Declining to call Jesus the Son of God is not done to belittle or insult Jesus, rather it is done to glorify and magnify God. Allah is the one and only, and He is far above having a child or a partner in His divinity. One should realize that Jesus never claimed to be Son of God, let alone God Himself. Through a careful study of the Bible, one would come to the conclusion that Jesus never called Himself God or God's Son. Nowhere does it state in the Bible that Jesus proclaimed Himself as God. Rather, others made the proclamation after Jesus' departure. Jesus, peace be upon him, only preached the teachings he received from God the Almighty. Prophet Jesus was only a servant and a slave of God. He is not the Son of God in the sense that he was a begotten Son of God. Rather, he is metaphorically speaking the Son of God in the sense that all righteous people are all sons of God's. Yet this title is not to be taken literally as many Christians have done in error. There are many individuals labeled sons of God in the Bible, including Prophet Jacob, Solomon, and Adam as this was a common saying amongst the children of Israel. As Jesus Christ grew into adulthood, he began to travel and preach God's message throughout the land of Palestine to the children of Israel. He taught the scripture that God sent to him, known as the Injil, which translates to mean good news or gospel, confirming the truth of previous holy books of God. And I have come confirming that was before me of the Torah, and to make lawful for you some of what was forbidden to you. And I have come to you a sign from your Lord. So fear Allah and obey me. Quran 3.50 To reinforce his message, God granted Prophet Jesus the ability to perform miracles, such as fashioning birds from clay, then blowing into them, turning them to birds, healing the leopards, the blind, and even resurrecting the dead, all by the will and power of God the Almighty. Never did Jesus Christ take credit for performing the miracles by himself, without the power of God. According to the Bible, many verses indicate that Jesus never took credit nor stated that he could perform miracles on his own. All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Matthew 28:18. I can of mine own self do nothing. John 5:30. I with the finger of God cast out devils. Luke 11:20. Prophet Jesus preached and stressed that no deity is worthy of worship except the one true God, and only through him the one true God, Allah, which is the unique name of God, can obtain salvation in the hereafter. The Prophet Jesus attracted an inner circle of devoted followers who listened to his teachings with humility, a circle known as the disciples. Jesus Christ preached the same general message as the messengers and the prophets before him. According to the Bible, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked them, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our Lord, the Lord is one. Mark 12, 28-29 Never did Prophet Jesus nor any other prophet preach that God is part of the Trinity. 
because the children of Israel at the time had gone astray from the straight path of God, Allah sent them their final prophet, Jesus Christ, to remind them that this is their last chance to fulfill God's commandments. When Jesus Christ continued to preach God's message, commanding them to do certain things and to avoid certain things, instead of believing Him and following Him, they got frustrated by Him, turning their backs on Him and rejecting Him, plotting against Him. According to the New Testament, a group of hypocritical and self-serving men of the children of the Israelites began plotting against Prophet Jesus. They complained to the Roman authorities who were pagan idol worshippers who had the political power at the time, this owing to the fact that the children of Israel were only a minority. The children of Israel complained that Prophet Jesus was preaching something new and they provoked the Romans to rise against him, making the Roman governor believe that the call of Jesus conveyed direct threats against the Roman power. His own people claimed that Jesus Christ was an agitator speaking against the emperor, which was not true. The Roman governor issued an order that Prophet Jesus is arrested, then crucified by hanging him on a cross and starving him, a common form of shame killing at the time. According to the Christian narrative, which Muslims do not believe, the Roman authorities found Jesus, arrested him, then put him on the Roman cross where he died. They eventually buried him, only to see him resurrected and returned from the dead. He announced to everyone that he was the Son of God. In reality, and according to the Holy Quran, God states, And for their saying in boast, Indeed, we have killed the Messiah Jesus, the Son of Mary, the Messenger of Allah, and they did not kill him nor did they crucify him, but another was made to resemble him to them. And indeed, those who differ over it are in doubt about it. They have no knowledge of it except the following of assumption. And they did not kill him for certain, rather Allah raised him to himself, and ever is Allah exalted in might and wise. Quran 157-158 So according to the Holy Quran, they neither killed nor crucified Prophet Jesus. Rather, God placed a resemblance of Prophet Jesus on another person to make him like Jesus Christ. The Christians were differing amongst themselves as to the truth of the matter, as they themselves were in doubt and have no certainty as to what really happened. In all actuality, God rescued his Prophet by raising Prophet Jesus' soul and body up to himself. The Israelites and the Roman authorities never were able to harm him, crucify him, or kill him. This version of events was only an assumption. According to some Islamic scholars, God punished Judas the traitor by casting him in resemblance to Jesus. So they crucified him instead, assuming it was Prophet Jesus. According to the New Testament, Jesus Christ returned to his followers. Whereas Christians believe that he returned from the dead, Muslims believe that he never died. His followers were terrified at his reappearance, as they thought he had been crucified. Then Prophet Jesus said, Look at my hands and my feet, it is I myself. Touch me and see, a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. Luke 24 39. Jesus then asked for food so he could eat before them like a human being would, not a spirit or a ghost. After he proved his existence, he told them God had willed him to leave and that in his absence they should preach and teach the message and be faithful to God. He promised them finally that another would come after him. Whereas Christians believe that Prophet Jesus was referring to the Holy Spirit in the context of this statement, Muslims believe his words and truth reference the Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad is mentioned and prophesies in scriptures of all the major religions. In the Old Testament, God the Almighty speaks to Prophet Moses, I will raise up for them, the Israelites, a prophet like you from among their brethren, the Israelites. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell them, the Israelites, everything I command him. Deuteronomy 18.18 This verse is indeed referencing Prophet Muhammad, who came after Prophet Jesus and after Prophet Jesus. Prophet Muhammad is also mentioned by name in Song of Solomon verse 516 in Hebrew. The Hebrew word used there is Muhammadim. The letters I am in the end indicates a plural variation of a term that translates to mean respect, majesty, and grandeur. Without the I am suffix, the name will be Muhammad, translated to mean the praise one or altogether lovely in the authorized version of the Bible. Gospel John 16, 12 to 14, Jesus Christ states, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now then bear. God did not find it fit for mankind to receive the whole message of Islam, 
the way of life of submitting fully to God at this point, as they would not have been able to bear this message in its entirety. So Jesus Christ goes on to say, But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears, and He will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me. The Gospel of John 16, 12-14 this spirit of truth is none other than God's last and final messenger of mankind, meant to be followed until the last day. Prophet Muhammad, who came after Jesus Christ, preached the same general message as Prophet Jesus and every other messenger and prophet before him. After the departure of Prophet Jesus, controversies sparked amongst his followers. They questioned as to whether the person who returned was really Jesus Christ and if he had really returned. A severe split erupted in the Christian faith revealing a wide spectrum of opinions regarding Prophet Jesus and his role in the world. Prophet Jesus was a mighty messenger of God, and he was only a mortal human being. He was born from a mother, he ate and he drank, he slept and used the bathroom, he suffered pain and emotions. This differentiates him from the God the Almighty, as God does not need to eat, sleep or drink. He was only a servant and slave of God. The idea of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the concept that Jesus died for our sins is firmly rejected in Islam. O people of the scripture, do not commit excess in your religion or say about Allah except the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, was but a messenger of God. And his word, which he directed to Mary and a soul created at command from him, so believe in Allah and his messengers and do not say three. Desist, it is better for you. Indeed, Allah is but one God. Exalted is he above having a son. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on earth. And sufficient is Allah as disposer of affairs. Quran 4, 171. God makes it clear in the Holy Quran that the act of ascribing a son to him angers him. Ascribing a son to God is beneath the Almighty, God states. And they say the most beneficent Allah has begotten a son or offspring or children. Indeed, you have brought forth a terrible thing, whereas by the heavens are almost torn and the earth is split asunder and the mountains fall in ruins that they ascribe a son to the most beneficent. But it is not suitable for the most beneficent that he should beget a son. Quran 88-92 According to the Quran, the one that calls God a part of the Trinity is the disbeliever who will face a painful punishment. The Quran states, They have certainly disbelieved who say, Allah is the third of three, and there is no God except one God. And if they do not desist from what they are saying, they will surely afflict the disbelievers among them a painful punishment. Quran 5-73 the Qur'an then goes on to say, The Messiah, son of Mary, was not but a messenger. Other messengers have passed before him, and his mother was a supporter of truth. They both used to eat food. Look how we make clear to them the signs. Then look how they are deluded. Qur'an 5.75 It's important to mention that Prophet Jesus did not come down with a new law, nor did he come to abolish the Old Testament, the Torah. Rather, he came to affirm, teach, and preach the previous law, the law of Moses. According to the Qur'an and the Bible, the children of Israel were veering away from the laws and disobeying the commandments of God. Prophet Jesus' mission was to confirm the Torah that was previously sent to render certain things lawful in an effort to facilitate life for the children of Israel and to proclaim and reaffirm the belief in the one God. Prophet Jesus was the last in a long line of messengers sent to the Jewish people. Prophet Jesus and the book he came down with, the Injil, the Gospel, was not meant for non-Israelites. According to the Bible, Jesus said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of Israelites. Matthew 15, 24. In another verse, these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the city of the Gentiles, and into the city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 10, 5-6. So my dear Christian brother and sister, why are you spreading the gospel to those for whom it was never meant? Jesus clearly stated that he was sent only to the children of Israel and not for everyone else. God has sent another book after the gospel, his final book, the Holy Quran, and his last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, which is meant for our nation, the last nation, to exist on earth until the end of time. Christians believe that every child is born with the taint of the original sin committed by our parents. 
prophet Adam and Eve, a sin committed when disobeying our Creator and eating from the forbidden tree. According to Islam, the notion of the original sin is inconsistent with the concept of detailing justice for the Almighty, the All-Merciful. How can God, the All-Just, make an innocent child responsible for or to bear the guilt of a sin committed by a distant ancestor? It is not just for one soul to carry the burden of another. And there is no justice to be found in one person being punished to save another when they never committed that sin themselves. Islam teaches that everyone is responsible and will be held accountable for their own actions, and that everyone is responsible for their own salvation. Salvation only comes from the act of believing in the one God and following His commandments. Christians believe that since all men are born in the sinful state, it is necessary that Christians believe in the atonement, the idea that Jesus Christ died for our sins. However, nowhere in the Bible did Jesus explicitly state that He would die to save mankind from sin. According to the Holy Quran and the Bible itself, one can receive forgiveness of sins from God solely through the sincere repentance sought directly from God. If God the Almighty wished and willed to forgive mankind, then He certainly could have done without the need of sacrificing Jesus Christ, His supposedly begotten Son. The idea that all one has to do to attain salvation is to simply believe Jesus died for His sins without the need of any worship nor the need to follow the holy law because Jesus Christ simply fulfilled it for them, was never preached by Jesus Christ Himself at any given time, nor is it even in the Bible. Muslims believe that Jesus is still alive and that He will return to this world in the last days before the Day of Judgment. So indeed, Muslims do believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Muslims believe that Jesus Christ will return and preach the true oneness of God, as He has always done, and He will not preach the Trinity. Jesus Christ will prove to the Jews that He was never sacrificed, and He will prove to the Christians that they were wrong to ascribe Him as divine. Imam Mahdi will be alive at this time of his return, also the time of the battle of the great Armageddon that Christians also predict. Muslims will be fighting on the side of Prophet Jesus, who will be their leader. According to the Holy Quran, God will ask Prophet Jesus on the Day of Judgment, O oh Jesus, Son of Mary, did you say to the people, Take me and my mother as deities besides Allah? He will say, Exalted are you. It was not for me to say that which I have no right. If I had said it, you would have known it. You know what is within myself, and I do not know what is within yourself. Indeed, it is you who was knower of the unseen. I said not to them except what you have commanded me, to worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. And I was a witness over them as long as I was among them. But when you took me up, you were the observer over them, and you are, over all things, witness. If you should punish them, indeed they are your servants. And if you forgive them, indeed it is you who is the exalted in might, the wise. Quran 5, 116, 118. Muslims are the true followers of Jesus Christ, following what Jesus Christ actually preached and taught. To my dear Christian brothers and sisters, it's imperative that you research and learn the true message of Jesus Christ. God the Almighty has distinguished man above his other creations by providing him the gift of reason. One would not be considered a rational being if he or she simply believed in a faith without using their intellect, without investigating, rationalizing, analyzing, examining, pondering and reflecting over what he or she believes and just simply blindly following their church and their pastor. To my dear Christian brother or sister, take the time to research and think for yourself. May your journey to the answer and to the truth be pleasant and successful. Our Prophet narrated, whoever guides another to a good deed will get a reward similar to the one who performs it. So please like, subscribe, and share this video. Assalamu alaikum.